Okay, welcome back kiddos. We're going to work on the free response section of the AP exam question four. In particular, this is known as the equation section. There are three equations. Uh, this section is worth 15 points. You need to write and balance the net ionic equation uh, for these three reactions. Uh, the equation itself, written and balanced properly, is worth four points, and then you pick up one point for answering a question related to that equation. So, uh, question A, we had a piece of solid strontium carbonate. They're giving you a little hint here that they don't want that dissociated. Not that you would have anyway, because you folks know your solubility rules, and carbonates you know are insoluble except for group 1 and ammonium, so strontium you would have expected to stick together anyway. At any rate, let's go ahead and write that down. Strontium's 2 plus, carbonate's 2 negative, so SrCrO3. Uh, CO3, excuse me, is our first reactant, and it's being dropped into a 0.1 molar solution of hydrochloric acid. Now that's a strong acid. Remember to dissociate your strong acids and bases. So I'm going to dissociate that into H pluses and Cl minuses. It's a cute little double replacement reaction. The stro strontium and the hydrogen are going to switch places. So strontium and chloride, that's soluble. Remember, all chlorides are soluble except for silver, mercury, and lead. So strontium and chloride will be dissociated, and H plus will hop together with CO3 2 negative, but not so fast. Remember, H plus and CO3 2 negative do not form H2CO3 in this case. It forms H2O and CO2. Now, my spectator is the chloride ions, so we'll get rid of those. And we have our ionic equation that's not yet balanced. I have one strontium on both sides, one carbon on both sides. Let's put two in front of my H's to give me two H's on both sides and three oxygens. We are good to go. So I would have one point for my reactants, generally speaking, uh, two points for my products, one for balancing it. And then I'm going to pick up another point by answering this question. Indicate one thing that you would observe um, during the reaction. Well, first of all, the strontium carbonate I would expect to dissolve, right? Its mass would get smaller, and I would see the evolution of a gas. It would bubble because I'm making carbon uh, dioxide. So evolution of, uh, if I could write here, of a gas. And I'd be able to pick up my fifth point. Let's take a look at the next question from the 2012 equation section. Here we have magnesium metal is strongly heated in oxygen gas. This is a synthesis reaction. Magnesium, Mg, oxygen gas of course is diatomic. So when these two react we're going to have magnesium oxide. Magnesium is 2 plus, oxygen is 2 negative, so we form MgO. Of course that's not balanced, so I'll put a 2 here and a 2 there, and away we go. I've got my four points. The question they ask is, well, what's the oxidation number of magnesium before, and what's the oxidation number after? Let's figure it out. It's in its elemental state before, and the oxidation number of an element is zero. Afterwards, it's stuck to an oxygen. We know oxygen's two negative, so it ends up as magnesium being two plus. So before, it is zero, and after, it is two plus. Letter C, a solution of nickel 2 chloride, a solution of. So we're going to go ahead and dissociate that, and you folks know that chlorides are soluble anyway, except for silver, mercury, and lead, is added to a solution of sodium hydroxide, forming a precipitate. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base, so I'm going to dissociate that into sodium and hydroxide ions. Once again, a nice little double replacement, nickel and sodium. So sodium plus and chloride negative, that's soluble, so I dissociate them, and nickel 2 plus and hydroxide form nickel hydroxide NiOH2, and that is my precipitate, folks. Now my spectators are the chlorides and the sodiums. Let's make sure this is balanced. I'll put a 2 in front of my OH. I have nickel 2 plus and two hydroxides form NiOH2. There's my four points. Oh, let's hope I can pick up my fifth point here. So, it says if equal volumes of one molar nickel 2 chloride and one molar sodium hydroxide are used, what ion is present in the solution in the highest concentration after the precipitate forms? 
Well, let's see. Uh, let's keep in mind nickel 2 chloride. In reality, this would have Ni2 plus N2Cl minuses, and I would have 2Cl minuses over here, I suppose, and I have two sodiums, but we have twice as many chlorides as I have sodiums, so chloride would be the ion present in the highest amount. And there we go. In probably just under five minutes, I've been able to complete uh, question four. Don't spend any more than 10 minutes on this section. You need to move along. If you need to spend a couple more, I suppose you can rationalize. But remember, you're going to be taking away uh, time from questions 5 and 6. All right, let's take a look at the 2011 uh, free response section, question 4. And once again, that's our equation section. And we'll see if we can handle this. Uh, letter A, solid. Once again, they're telling us it's a solid. They're giving us a big hint. Magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium is 2 plus. Hydroxide is 1 negative. So we have MgOH2 is added to a solution of hydrobromic acid. Again, a strong acid, kiddos. So we dissociate that into H plus and be our negative ions. So let's see what we end up here. Uh, we're going to end up with a double replacement reaction. Mg and Br. So we're going to get Mg2 plus and Br negatives. So we will have, uh, let's see, that's soluble. All bromides are soluble except for silver, mercury, and lead. And H plus and OH get together. So we will make H2O. So there's my skeleton equation. It's not quite balanced yet. So let's see. I'm going to need two H pluses and two Br negatives. Uh, because once again, I'll have two OH minuses here. I'll need two HBrs. So on this side, I'll have two Br negatives. And I'll have making two waters. So I believe that's balanced now. So are there any spectators that we can get rid of? Aha, uh -huh, the bromides, they're gone. So MgOH2 and two protons react to form Mg2 plus and two waters. Perfect. So it then says what volume in mils of two molar hydrobromic acid is required to react with 0.1 moles of solid uh, magnesium hydroxide. So let's see. Uh, we have 0 0.10 moles of magnesium hydroxide, MgOH2. We're going to go from moles of what we know, some simple quick stoichiometry. You do not need a calculator here, nor are you allowed one, to moles of HBr. Uh, let's see, the mole ratio is 1 to 2, so 2 HBrs for every 1 magnesium hydroxide. And then we need to go from moles to liters. Now the molarity of my hydrobromic acid is 2 moles per liter. So my answer is going to be in liters. It does want milliliters, so we'll add one more step here. We'll go from liters to mils. So 0.1 times 2 is 0.2. Divided by 2 is 0.1. Uh, times 1,000 is 100 milliliters. And you're done. You should be able to handle that easily without a calculator. Let's take a look at letter B. Excess hydrochloric acid. So we have a strong acid again, folks. So let's go ahead. Well, let's see. Oh, I'm going to read the whole thing. Is added to a solution of cobalt 2 nitrate to produce a coordination complex. Now, if you watched my little review video just uh, before this one, we talked about complex ion formation. And what that involves is it involves a transition metal ion. In this case, it is cobalt 2 plus and a Lewis base. In this case, it is Cl negatives. That will act as my ligand. Do you remember how many of these will form a relationship with that transition metal ion? Well, the little shortcut here is to double the oxidation number, and that tells you the number of ligands that can attach to it. So, four. So, I'm going to have Co, Cl, four. I'm going to put that in brackets and figure out its charge. Cobalt's 2 plus, each chloride's 1 negative, so I end up with 2 negatives left over. To balance this, I'm going to put a 4 in front of the chloride, and I've got that. Now, your AP teachers probably don't have a lot of time to do coordination chemistry with you. So this is a fast one. It's fairly easy if you know the trick. Okay, go back and watch my review video if you think that'll help. But these are not that bad. Now, which species acts as the Lewis base? And that would be my chloride ions, it can donate a pair of electrons to make a coordinate covalent bond with the cobalt ion. And the last one, 
uh, from the 2011 test, we have copper wire, Cu, is dropped into a solution of, so we have a solution of, we're going to dissociate this into Ag plus and NO3 negative, solution of silver nitrate. Cute little single replacement. The metal will switch places with the metal ion. The metal ion becomes the neutral metal, and the metal becomes the ion. So copper's most common oxidation state is 2+, plus. end up with copper 2+, plus and nitrates. Sorry about that, my copy machine just decided to go through some type of reset or maybe cleaning. It'll be over in just a second. Sorry. Okay, need to balance this. Let's get rid of the nitrates first. Boom, they're gone. Now remember, both the mass and the charge has to balance, and you see that the charge doesn't balance here. So I need to have two Ag pluses, and that will give me two silvers. And so now we've got that taken care of. Describe what is observed as the reaction proceeds. Well, we're probably going to see, we're probably going to see a couple of things here. I would imagine that the copper wire would dissolve as it reacts. I would also imagine the solution would turn blue. Do you folks know why? Yeah, transition metal ions with partially filled D sublevels are usually colored, and copper 2 plus is a colored uh, ion. So the copper wire will get smaller, uh, the solution will turn blue. How about this? Silver metal is produced. Now, you only need to have one of those. I got carried away and wrote all three for you, but one of those would be fine on the test. We try to get one more in. I don't know if we can get it in in our 15-minute time period, but we'll give it a whirl. This is the 2011 Form B test. Zinc metal, Zn, is added to hydrobromic acid. That's a strong acid, folks, so I'm going to dissociate that. Single replacement. The metal will, repl will replace the positive ion here, in this case, hydrogen. And hydrogen can't be by itself, so we're going to draw it like as the diatomic element that it is. And then zinc will become the ion. And Br negative. Br negatives are gone. Charge and balance, uh, charge and mass have to balance, so, so I'm going to need two H pluses here. It gives me two hydrogens and two positives on both sides. And I am good to go with letter A, uh, with letter A's equation. That's the half reaction for the oxidation part. Remember, oxidation is losing electrons. I tell my kids, Leo goes ger. Lose electrons, oxidation, Leo, and gain electrons, reduction, ger. So I want the one that loses electrons. It looks like zinc goes from zinc with a zero charge to zinc 2 plus. We're going to balance that with two electrons on that side. Not too bad. Hey, I got five points on that one. Letter B, solid lithium oxide, Li2O, is added to distilled water. Li is positive one, oxygen is two negative, that's where the Li2O comes in. So we can look at this as a double replacement reaction. I'm going to pretend water is HOH here. So Li and H will, will, will switch places. So I'm going to get H2O over here, and we're going to get... Um, Let's see, Li, we'll get oh, it Li and OH, we're going to get lithium hydroxide, which is a strong base, so I'm going to dissociate that into Li pluses and OH minuses. Now, we need to balance this guy here a little bit, and so it looks like I'm going to have um, a couple of extra, an extra hydrogen, so I'm going to get two lithium hydroxides maybe are produced. It gives me two lithiums on both sides two hydrogens, and let's see, um, I'm also going to need to get rid of one of these waters, or two waters, uh, let me see, ah, I'm, I feel like I'm rushed, sorry, so I might be making a silly mistake here and there. So let's see, Li2, oh, and we have two, so two, uh, four, that's messed up. So this is what it turned, I, I know the, um, the one of the waters um, on this side ends up being cancelled out. I think my two had to be on that side and I had one on this side. So we end up with something like that. Sorry, I apologize. I'm in a bit of a hurry here. I don't want you folks to have to 
take much more time than you need. So we have two hydroxides being produced, so the pH of the solution is greater than 7 because we have hydroxides produced. So the pH is greater than 7. That's going to be basic. All right, and finally, uh, we have uh, 100 mils of a 1 molar solution of strontium chloride, 100 mils of sodium carbonate. We form a precipitate. So strontium chloride is soluble, SR2 plus, and Cl negative. Remember, all chlorides are soluble except for silver, mercury, and lead, and sodium carbonate. Sodium is 1 plus, carbonate is 2 negative. Double replacement, as are many of these. Na plus and Cl negative, they will stay dissociated because they're soluble. Strontium 2 plus and CO3 2 negative form SrCO3. There's my precipitate. Cl negatives are gone and the sodiums are gone, and what I have left balances nicely. Now, what will happen to the precipitate, the carbonate here, if I add a bit of hydrochloric acid to it? Well, remember, carbonates, when they are acidified, will end up forming H2O and CO2. We'll end up fizzing and bubbling, so we'll have a gas being produced there. CO2 will form during this reaction. Okay? All right. Well, I've done three of the tests for you in a little over 15 or 16 minutes. I sorry if I uh, was a bit rushed there. Um, I hope this helps you get ready for the big exam. Um, I wish you all the luck. Thanks. Bye-bye.